What annoys me most is when I tell, you know, people back home I'm playing overseas or I'm doing this, and they go, oh, man, I, you know, I feel you're lucky you're on vacation. And it's, I, I, I quickly stop and I say, it's not a vacation. Trust me, it's not a, va a vacation. is something you do for a weekend, for a week, two weeks tops. If you got a lot of money, maybe a month. I'm here for eight, nine months. This is a relocation. It's not a vacation. First year, I started my career in Turkey. Israel, my first year. Latvia. France. I played in Spain. The second two years, I was in San Sebastian, Spain. Greece. I played some games in Russia. Israel. My third season, I was in Turkey as well. Third year, Italy. In Italy. And this year, my fifth year, I'm in Rome. Typical tourist stuff right here. We're riding a, a bicycle from the Colosseum all the way to the Pantheon. Yeah. Yes. No. Nah. Yeah, I would. Yes. No. No. Tolga Geçim'in oyunda kaldığı süreleri nasıl değerlendiriyorsun? Oh, 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 bu arada... The, the atmosphere of the games is pretty good depending on what city or team you play. The atmosphere of the fans, you know, is a... Is a depending on what city you in, is amazing. It, it kind of reminds me of college, you know, certain places that you go. The atmosphere is really great. The fans are, you know, really into it. And before the game, you warming up, they throwing like 20 rolls of toilet paper on the floor. And I'm, th I'm asking myself, like, y'all know somebody got to clean this up. Like, <laughs> y'all know somebody got to clean it up. It gets pretty crazy with the horns, you know, you, the crowd yelling at you, you don't know what they're saying, getting cussed out <laughs> in different languages and stuff like that. Part of the way into the first quarter, uh, our fans throw like, probably like a cluster of M80s at the other team's bench. So, you know, they clear the bench, they're sitting at half court, then they just start throwing coins. Uh, they broke off like pieces of the toilets in the arena, pieces of the seats. They just start throwing all kind of stuff at them. Um, as the game went on, uh, we were losing. And so then they just got rowdy again. They started, they, <laughs> it was kind of crazy. They had bottles of uh, urine and feces and we're throwing them at, at the court. Uh, one of my boys actually got hit with a bottle. I've grown to, to, to love it, man. I, like, I, I really enjoy playing overseas. <laughs> no. No. Not going there. Nope. No. No. The referees in Europe um, were very questionable. I've heard a lot of stuff about referees getting paid off by certain teams to, you know, get a certain team to win. Um, but be it as it may, the officiating in the States, I think, is a little bit more efficient, uh, consistent. I think it, it's, a, it's a little frustrating at times. <laughs> the referees are, are so, so, so different. I actually had one guy tell me, uh, the ref told him, hey, you're American, you're bigger, you're faster, you're stronger, you gotta play through that stuff. Um, you know, and that's just something that, you know, you're not used to hearing. It's like, you could tell people about it. You, you could tell people in America about it, and they may listen and be like, ah, oh, the NBA referees are, are terrible, he sucks. Like, they have no idea. It's, it's a tough job being a referee, you know, the game's moving so fast, and with referees to get a lot of uh, negative publicity for the job that they do. It's better. I mean, some of the calls that they make is, is simple stuff, and I, I, I really don't know how they miss it. Um, you know, with that being said, you know, you understand that no one's perfect, and we, we all make mistakes. No. 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 Not a chance in the world. Yes. No, 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 no. No, heard about what's going on right now, no. <laughs> it's Monday afternoon. I'm in the training room at the gym. Uh, about to get some treatment, some uh, ultrasound. Teams overseas care about your injury as long as it doesn't jeopardize their season too much. If it's a minor injury where you sit out a month or two, okay, they, they don't have a problem with that. Depends on the injury, you know. 
some guys that, that have been lost for the season, you know, they they end up getting them out of there and getting new guys in. Um, Last season I had a hamstring injury, but the team did rush me back. I trust the doctors depending on what city I'm in. If I'm in, like, say we're in Rome right now, I, I'll trust the doctors here because it's, you know, it's a capital, you know, it's a big city. So some of the best doctors I think are in the world are in our city. Uh, my team, Locomotive, flew me to Germany. I went to Munich to see a, a really good doctor. And luckily for me, um, he says, because I'm, you know, I, I do a lot of stretching because I'm very, you know, my body can take certain hits, um, that it was just a grade two MCL sprain. I would definitely get a second opinion in the States. You know, just to, I've heard so many bad things, you know, unfortunately, I, I know there's a lot of good doctors out here, but you know, it's just something like, it's your career. You wanna make sure you're doing the best and, uh, can get the best treatment, whatever, for yourself. Um, but I also have a doctor uh, in, in the States, you know, where I'll let them handle the situation here. And then once, uh, if I was to get hurt, seriously injured or whatever, I definitely would let my doctor know in the States just to get a second opinion. It's the business. It's the cost of the job. They, they trying to win as many games. And if you can't, if you can't, uh, for, for, what is it, fulfill your, uh, your duties, they're going to get somebody else in here that can. If it's going to be a longer stretch of period, then they're probably going to sign another American player. And then let's say that American player they bring in is playing really good, then they're going to tell you, yeah, just rest your energy. Or, you know, they might just tell you, you know, we're going to buy you out and send you on your way. So, I mean, as long as your injury isn't too, in too serious, then, you know, teams will care. But if it's long-term problems, then, uh, yeah, they're going to get rid of you. Oh, well, you know, once they tell me like that week prior, like, this is a big game because we need to win, but because it's a, it's a lot on the line, bragging rights and shit, so it could be maligned. Have I ever seen teams purposely get rid of American players? No. Yeah, I have. Uh, uh, yeah, I've I definitely seen teams you know, try to get rid of guys. Um, have I heard horror stories? Of course. I think every player over here has. I ain't gonna say his name, but you know, it's been a, a player that played in uh, Italy. You know, he's been, he was going out before the game, going out, you know, uh, it just wasn't professional. I've heard stories about teams, you know, doing things to get rid of players that they really didn't want, or, you know, putting them through things just to make them leave, so they didn't really have to pay them all the money that they owed them. I mean, they're doing any and everything. Uh, they do anything from, you know, keeping their car away from them, saying it's in the shop, getting fixed. When I was in Varese, the assistant coach called me a bitch. And, uh, like, it took everything in my power not to just go over there and, and snuff them in the face. All right, it's uh, 3.01 p.m. We're about to go hit up this Nike store and see if they got the, the 10s and the, the Jordans, the baby blue ones. Uh, I'm not a big Jordan person, but uh, we just finished practice, and I want to see if they got them. If they got them, I'm going to get them. If not, you know, no big deal. But hopefully they do, because usually, you know, it's not a big rush to get these shoes out here. So let's go find out real quick. In my off time, you know, in order to, to kill time over here, um, I like to do a lot of like photography and videography. Uh, now I'm studying the uh, Italian language, so that takes up a good amount of my time. I enjoy cooking, you know. Spend countless hours on the internet, on different websites. PlayStation 4, 2K, uh, Black Ops. I got all the movies. All the movies that come out, I get. Uh, internet and shopping. It's kind of hard because I'm in Orvieto and it's really like nothing out there, but it's really nice out there. So I probably walk around, you know, shop a little bit, but I like to come to Rome a lot. You know, I'm in, I'm in a different situation because I have a family here. So the, as, whenever we get downtown, I just kind of like to explore the town and do as much as my family since I don't get to see them as much with the two day practices and the, the long travel dates as we have. You know, in America, that's just unheard of. You, you're not going to go anywhere and, unless you got to connect like three or four in the afternoon and get some Jordans and just walk out five minutes later. It just doesn't happen like that in America. But it did today here in Rome, so hope y'all jealous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> uh. <laughs> nice weapon, man. I gotta go there. <laughs> you can go to Ball and Drexel because the 
black chicks was the this freakiest black chicks in the ass. motherfucking world. Was there and the white Malik girls. Was there. And the white <laughs> girls. <laughs> man, He's I mean, right the black Malik chicks were freaks and the white girls were like. When I when I first got overseas, I was just so focused. Like I, I don't think I went out that much until the first game. The nightlife in Europe uh, versus America is night and day, man. I, I actually, once I was done playing over there, I stopped going out over here um, in America just because of, of uh, how much better it is. My my perception changed. It's like, man, you got you got to enjoy life too. Like this is a job, but. Still gotta have some fun. Like you just can't be basketball, basketball, basketball. That's gonna run you crazy. Some players, you know, need to go out and need to, to get away and clear their minds in order to play well. I'm young, I'm single. I mean, why wouldn't I go explore a new country that I just moved to or never been to? You know, these were massive clubs on the on the beach. You know, you're they're going till four, five, six in the morning. Um, you know, everybody's dressed up nice, the music's good. Uh, it's just a different vibe, you know. It, the nightlife is, you know, it's, it's crazy in Europe, you know, especially being an athlete and all. The nightlife in Rome, from from my perspective, is um, it's very nice. It's because they look at athletes in a different way, so we're able to get in for free. We're able to get drinks sometimes for free. Um. It's important because you have to be happy overall to deliver on the court. So I'm totally uh, pro the nightlife. You know, life is short anyways. I'm in a whole different country. Like, I never thought I'd be growing up. I never thought I'd be in Italy playing basketball, man. So I got to embrace it. I got to have fun. I got to enjoy it. Because you just never know when it's going to stop. From all the experiences that I had in going out over there, uh, Europe, European uh, clubs and nightlife is way better. You know, when I was younger, like, I used to go to all the, little, all the hip hop little spots and stuff like that. You know, there'd be groupies everywhere. It's easy to get labeled as a nightlifer more than a basketball player. And then that's going to affect your earnings, your career, and uh, it's never good to be labeled. Okay, Lucky Lucci, I know what they call me, Pisano, <laughs> El Panino. Uh, I felt like the difference between American women versus European women, um, you know, there's a, a difference in the, in the dating scene. Yeah, the women here, you know, you got different type of flavors out, out here. Are they different? <laughs> man, they're a thousand times different, man. A thousand times different. You might see a, a brown skinned chick with blue eyes, or you might like, because they so mixed, you know, over here. So. Oh, obviously, over there, they want to go for coffee. That's kind of like the 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 precursor or the date let's say um, but it's more direct like if they like you they like you there's no games or hoops to jump through the european woman has no problem they have no problem just catering to, to their to their man like uh, the values are a little bit lower <laughs> i would have to say here than it is in the states you know, i don't know if it's because you know we athletes or whatever so it's a little bit easier for us to you know do whatever we want to do but I went, I went out with, um, you know, some of the, the guys that were in town at the time, and you know, they were literally saying, "Hey, watch out for her! Watch out for her! This girl, you know, dates uh, a lot of the American guys." You know, when I came overseas, that, that's when I did realize there are groupies everywhere. I have a saying: American women want green money. European women want green cars. Really, all they looking for, looking for is a come up. One, one, one of these stupid, stupid dudes to come out, go out there and wipe one of them up, and they, then they ain't got, you know, they, they going to America. You know what I'm saying? They might not have no, no, no way to get to America, but shoot, they find one of these dumb, dumb dudes to <laughs> wipe them up and then bring them back. You know, shit, that's all they looking for. Not all of them, but that's it's the same. Just it just sounds really good, so I just go with it. But that's the same. Uh, when I was single in Europe, I wouldn't say that I was. Uh, looking to, to date a European woman? I think I can. I, I think I can. Um, I, I just don't know if I will. I, I just, I cannot see myself marrying a, a European woman. I just can't see it. It's not, I don't, it's not wrong with it, that's just my preference. She gotta be special. Now, I can say this now, I can't say at the time, but you know, love is love. If you find somebody that you really care about, you know, then 
that's what it is. It just happens. Because I've been playing in Europe, like I'm spoiled. I'm spoiled now. Like it just some things I expect now. Like you know. I see him now outside. I said, oh, basketball. I said, yes, of course, man. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think uh, American players are pretty much uh, safe wherever they go. I have never felt endangered over here, just maybe because I'm a large woman. Um, no one really tries to start anything with me. I know an incident when a, a player was in Russia It was actually trying to leave the country, trying to leave the team. And somehow I think the team got word of it or someone seen him or something. When he got to the airport, they took his passport and told him to, to go back to the to his house or whatever. <laughs> so I, I guess that was pretty scary for him. Oh, I felt one time in danger or seen I was in Israel when they had um, they had bombings out there. Like I could I can dodge like, you know, basketball, but I ain't dodge no bombs, buddy. I was in Tel Aviv so I couldn't really feel it, but you can hear it. And they were just having bombs out there, but so people that was close to the border had to go into their shelters. And I know some teammates, I mean, not some teammates, but some of my friends that was close to the borderline had to go in shelters and their buildings be shaking or they had to stop practice. Back in 2007, there was a guy named Tony Harris. He got killed in Brazil. Uh, supposedly he committed suicide, but uh, the, the facts still weren't unknown. Um, a lot of people said he had mental problems or, you know, the day of UMS, he was very anxious and nervous and wanted to go home and he was found uh, hanging from a tree. My first year in Turkey, um, they had caught an Al-Qaeda terrorist cell uh, about two hours from my location. So for a little while, there was a travel advisory for Americans in that region. Also in 2011, there was a guy named Chauncey Hardy who played for Sacred Heart. He got killed in uh, Romania following a team win. Some smaller places in Italy that uh, they are in danger because of the girls. That may happen, so you, you gotta handle that. He put his American baseball cap on a, one of the local girls there, and I guess her boyfriend was in the club, and some of his friends didn't approve of that, and they got into a fight in the club, and he got pretty, beat up pretty bad, and which you know led to him being in a coma, and he died, you know, soon afterwards. But that's how it is, you know, when you're playing, you know, certain locations. We only have about 10 or 11 games left in the season, and when you start losing consecutive games, like the teams. The coaches, everybody gets nervous. They, they crack down on, you know, you got to be on time now or you, 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 you probably must be going out or, you know, you guys are being selfish and not listen to, you're not following to the team game plans. And, you know, they, they start pointing the finger more at you because, you know, they're not going to take the blame for it. What would I tell a person trying to play overseas? That it's not as easy as it looks. But for, if you want to play overseas, man, whatever they brought you in to do, do that got to be willing to adapt you know whether you like it or not if you want to be successful and make a good living um, within this job you've got to be willing to to adapt I mean it looks like it's fun and it's somewhere to travel that you don't have to practice as much or go as hard as you do in college but you could get cut Easily. You know, just you just got to come be prepared to work. They're going to work you. They're going to get everything out of you. Um, they're going to expect a lot from you. But if you come here with the right mindset, you definitely can have success here. If you was a scorer, score the ball. If you was a rebounder, rebound the ball. If you was a defensive player, defend your butt off. Because don't come over here trying to be something that you're not. Make sure you have a good agent and you're in a good situation. And then you have a great time. I tell them to have an open mind and be patient. Uh, the advice I would give to a rookie or someone that comes overseas for the first time is to find uh, a good agent that gives him the best advice, doesn't just try to make us the sale. Don't let nobody uh, tell you you can't. And always, you know, if you have a goal, you know, do whatever it takes, whatever it takes by any means necessary to accomplish your goal. And then uh, and stay humble. That's, that's what it's all about, in my, my opinion, staying humble. What advice I would give to an American wanting to play overseas? Watch this documentary. Basketball Jones. Basketball Jones. Basketball Jones. Basketball Jones. Basketball Jones.
Basketball Jones. Basketball Jones Overseas Journey Chibar. They'll just send them home. Hey man, how many questions we got, dog? I am starving. <laughs>